Welcome to the Share of One. It's Crypto Lark coming to you from New Zealand, bringing you this May 22nd edition of what is happening in crypto. Bitcoin, $8,400 down 1.46% on the 24 hour, still down 4% on the seven day. Ethereum down 4.81% on the seven day at $697. Overall, we are still bathing in a sea of blood in the crypto markets, but there are a few outliers. Tron is still up 10.2%, Binance Coin up 10.99%, probably, of course, surrounding the news that if you have 500 Binance tokens, you can double your referral commission. Decred is still killing it, which is absolutely awesome for the Decred community. Skycoin up 11% in the last 24 hours, and Factum up 23%. On to our first big story of the day. Iran and Russia consider using cryptocurrency to evade U.S. sanctions. Interesting. Very, very interesting. One quick comment. The sanctions regime is ridiculous and is used as an economic weapon to target countries that basically the Western countries, particularly the U.S., doesn't like. Often these sanctions are overblown and overly draconian and are used as an economic warfare tool and so to actually see them using cryptocurrencies i think is really really cool however you do have to keep in mind that if for example iran and russia started trading in bitcoin you bet your bottom dollar the u.s would start coming out against bitcoin because it would be helping the enemies so to speak nevertheless a very interesting development i think cryptocurrencies are such a great way for these countries to get around the gatekeepers which are the banks which of course play ball with the u.s very interesting situation of course we saw venezuela recently as well coming out and of course with the petro which is going to again be used to sidestep these financial control tools that big government and big banks are using to try and enforce their will on others. Interesting story. Japan's largest bank and cloud delivery giant Akamai announced blockchain payment network. Interesting. They are promising this will be a million transactions per second. Capacity for finalizing transactions under two seconds. We'll of course need some more details on that as it does come out, but certainly very interesting indeed. Walmart looks to blockchain for retail product resales. Also very interesting, new patent from Walmart will let customers basically register and then be able to resell their product. Of course, product resales are a nice utilization of blockchain because you can register the authenticity of that product. Now, Walmart, of course, is not uh, known for its designer brands or anything like that, but even basic things can, of course, still really benefit from this kind of technology. Poland backpedals on irrational crypto tax after strong backlash. The Polish government just keeps hating on crypto, and it's kind of funny. You know, they they paid this YouTuber to talk bad about crypto, and they are spending more money on uh, that kind of advertising to talk bad about crypto, and they tried to introduce these taxes, but they did get a strong backlash. Polish people want cryptocurrencies. The Polish government sees it as a threat. Typical situation, isn't it, guys? Kenya-based payment startup BitPesa, hoping to grow in Asia. Awesome. This would be really great to see BitPesa, a company that's on the ground on the continent in Africa, really pushing cryptocurrency adoption, of course, to be able to expand to some of those other underserved regions of the world in Central Asia, for example, or Southeast Asia, places that do need, of course, cryptocurrencies. South Africa to get its first cryptocurrency ATM. I'm blown away by this story. I, I just didn't even realize that South Africa didn't have a cryptocurrency ATM yet. That's crazy. But I'm super excited, of course, to see that actually coming forward. Now, looking at the Bitcoin ATM map, you can actually see the whole continent of Africa is woefully underrepresented at the moment. We have one ATM in Djibouti, we have one in Kenya, and we have one in Zimbabwe. South Africa, the economic engine of the continent, nothing. Of course, now we have one, which is really cool. Hopefully, of course, we'll see a big rollout of those here in the near term. Obviously, solutions like PundiX could also be a real value for people on the continent, but I'll take one. That's a start. We'll move on from there, South Africa. Google, 
courting Vitalik Buterin. Interesting, very interesting. Now, this is for a possible cryptocurrency project. We'll see what ends up happening. What would Ethereum be without Vitalik? That's an interesting question. Or could Ethereum still be his, uh, his side gig if he worked for Google? What would they come up with? This would be interesting. Maybe he'll just be an advisor over at Google. I don't know. We don't have any real details yet. A lot of it's speculation. And of course, will Vitalik abandon his baby? I don't know. He's already a superstar. He doesn't need Google. Google needs him. Interesting. Bitcoin Cash miners discuss funding development with a fraction of the block reward. Interesting. I think that would actually be a really good step for Bitcoin Cash to have uh, the proposing between 1 and 5% of each block reward would go towards funding development of the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. I actually think that's a pretty cool idea. I think that any cryptocurrency should have something like that in order to, of course, help really fund development, make sure that you stay as relevant as possible, fund advertising, all that kind of fun stuff. The one thing that you do have to keep in mind, this is where the decision was made. These are the people who are making that decision. We have uh, Roger, of course, and a couple representatives from the top Chinese mining pools. So if there's any illusions about, you know, the uh, democratic values of Bitcoin Cash. This is where the decision was made in a dark room with a few of the top representatives of the top economic interests in Bitcoin Cash. Keeping it real. Now, crypto tribalism, this is the final article for today, is holding back blockchain. And yes, I would agree. And even I can fall into this a bit sometimes being overly critical of some projects like Bitcoin Cash, for example. But crypto tribalism is definitely problematic. And we, we see this so much with communities just hating on each other and people, you know, it's like sports teams sometimes. And, you know, if a project is bringing something valuable to the space, I am just all about it. Even if I don't personally invest in it or if I'm not impressed with the team or whatever, anything that is bringing the crypto to a mainstream focus is good. So long as it's, of course, not scammy or trying to screw people over. And, you know, I've got a lot of criticisms of Bitcoin Cash, for example. You know, the, the centralization, the, the people behind it are a real worry for me. The continued attacks on Bitcoin, for example. But if Bitcoin Cash were just to do their Bitcoin Cash thing and develop, and I'd be very happy to see that community flourish if it were to do it in a positive way. But at the end of the day, the blockchain communities, we're all going to the same place. We all want the same thing at the end of the day, which is of course, get stupidly rich. No, I'm just teasing, of course. But to see really a, a better world, and that might sound kind of cheesy, but this kind of technology, and look at some of the stories we covered today, giving people economic access all around the world, giving people the ability to control their data and resell their goods and all these things. This is the end goal here, guys. And a lot of this sports team mentality stuff only holds the whole movement back. But hey, those are the two stories we do talking about cryptocurrencies on the internet. You guys let me know what you think about today's stories in the comment section down below. Long live the blockchain and peace out till next time.